So with the carps, uh, I didn't really do that much fancy stuff. I pulled them all the, almost all the way apart. There's a couple of things I left uh, um, without doing. So the first thing I started doing is uh, just taking the top off of uh, one of these, just to familiarize myself with uh, how it actually looks inside. Um, I tried to get off the floats here, but I couldn't really do that because it they were stuck with this bolt. I made sure to have four boxes uh, to keep track of all the components. And um, then I started uh, pulling apart the choke here. So that uh, came off pretty uh, easily. I just proceeded to take off all of the bowls uh, and all of the tops and then sort of loosen these uh, carbs from each other. Now th they were really stuck, the screws on this rail that hold the carbs together, they were the ones that I need to use an impact driver on to get uh, to loosen without actually stripping them. After I got them uh, pulled apart, then I could put them in my vise and try and hammer out this pin holding the float in. So you can see here it, it's actually quite a struggle, but I'll make it in the end. Then I can proceed to take off the fuel uh, filter here. I have the replacement parts for some of these parts. Um, so amongst other, this fuel filter uh, I have a replacement for. So I'm taking out these ones and uh, you can see they look uh, pretty bad. Um, what actually ended up happening here is that the new filters that I had, they worked, they worked fine. But uh, I had new needle valves for these filters too. And those were actually manufactured wrong or something. They were leaking. So I had to put the old valves back in with the new filters. After that, I removed the main jets. I guess this is, that's what it's called. Main jets, I removed all the components in here with the cage stuff as well. Um, and forgive me if I'm saying some wrong names on these components, but um, I, at least I removed the pilot jet and the main jet here and, and um, cleaned those up. They weren't really clogged or anything that I could see, but uh, they look a little bit nicer after they've been through the soda blaster. So this one is uh, come from the soda blasting, completely soda blasted like this. There is a significant difference. It doesn't really show that good on camera, but uh, it's pretty much, it's a lot better. So now they're all soda blasted and we've uh, changed the cardboard underneath to have more of a clean work area. As you can see here, the soda blasting leaves, uh, it does leave a bit of a residue inside them. So I, I am uh, using compressed air and water and uh, a bunch of things to clean them out after the soda blasting. And here we're soda blasting the bowls uh, and um, cleaning those out, getting the gasket uh, removed. Then we're gonna assemble this stuff. Uh, like I said earlier, I changed out some of the parts. I, um, it was mostly the filter, the gasket, some O-rings that came with the kit that I bought. I also sandblasted and painted the, the tops, like the caps uh, for the vacuum chamber. Now when I'm gonna assemble these, it's nice to have them level, at least as a tip somebody showed me on YouTube. So I used these two planks and um, sort of clamped them down to get them level as level as possible, straight as possible. And then I screwed them back on, uh, the rails back on. So here's the finished product. They should be overhauled and cleaned. The choke uh, holes in the bowls, they were all plugged, uh, plugged up, so I was able to get them cleaned. Now here's a shot of what actually happened uh, before I had to replace those needle, needle valves that I um, noticed were gone. Uh, as soon as I opened the port on the tank, it started dripping out of here. So um, that actually three out of four of those uh, fuel um, float valves, they were not sealing. 
So I had to swap them out with the old one. Here's a comparison of the old and the new valve. The new valve is on the floats here and the old valve is what I'm holding. But uh, when I swapped this out, uh, everything was working fine. Even though like the actual fuel filter, which the valve goes into is that all replaced. So, so there's some tuning left to be done on these carbs, but um, I'm not gonna do that right now. Uh, it'll be done off camera sometime later uh, when I can actually drive the bike probably. Yeah, the next chapter here will be about the exhaust system, uh, which was a bit of a pain uh, actually. This is how it looked. Uh, it's pretty dirty and um, so getting these apart was a real challenge. They were rusted together pretty hard. Basically how it ended was um, I did get them all apart, but I did also rip up a hole in the, the uh, main piece there. So I had to weld that shut later. So uh, before painting, I just uh, cleaned it up like this. I didn't use primer, I used some uh, heat paint. Uh, I think that'll be fine. And here I'm wrapping the exhaust uh, without gloves, which uh, turned out to be a mistake as my fingers were full of gra glass fiber uh, stuff for a day or two later. So this is uh, after it's been wrapped and painted. Um, looks, it looks all right. I couldn't do, I couldn't do much about the gold part, but uh, the rest I is cleaned up and looks nice. Now the next part here is well, probably one of the most annoying parts of the whole build. It was uh, so annoying to get these on and it, part of it was because the um, exhaust gaskets were a little bit bigger than the previous ones. So I couldn't actually get these nuts on. Here you can see the nuts are on here but it, they're barely uh, clinging to the threads and uh, so I had to actually cut uh, away a little bit of these um, uh, holder retainers or whatever they are and uh, that way I was able to actually get it on. I'm um, just attaching it on the outside here but uh, eventually I go ahead and swap it around so the exhaust is attached on the inside. No ride ready. Well, that was with the hole in the exhaust. I still think it sounded good, but um, I did go ahead and fix the hole in the exhaust later. 